We'll talk for a minute about this whole September 23rd, 2017 slash Revelation uh, 12 sign thing. I've had a lot of people ask me questions about it, and I'm just always like, eh, whatever. You know, it's, the Bible doesn't give any kind of date for the rapture. And uh, just, you know, I don't have any time for that kind of thing. I don't waste my time much on it. But, you know, I've get, when I get enough people asking and enough conversation going back and forth, you know, sometimes the Lord will say, you know, look into it. So I did. Um, it's a total lie. It's the, the thing is just absolutely ridiculous. Anybody that can, claims to be a Bible-believing Christian that gets roped into the thing, uh, you got some serious issues to, uh, to be roped into this thing. It's it's stupid nonsense. I'm just going to go over it real quickly. Not a real in-depth study because it's just not worth the time to put into an in-depth study here. Turn in your King James Bible to Revelation chapter 12. Okay, it says here, verse 1, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And so this whole thing comes out. I'm going to put up a picture of it here, this thing of uh, Virgo, you know, the virgin and things, and this constellation in heaven, and then there's Leo the lion above her head, and there's nine stars that make up Leo, but there's three planets, you know, so it proves it. It's just amazing, and Jupiter comes into the womb, and circles around and comes out between the two stars that make up her legs and things and oh it's a pr stupid absolutely stupid okay let's just look at this thing real quickly here okay there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun where's the clothed with the sun it's a constellation how's it clothed with the sun okay and it doesn't say john didn't look and see you know a constellation with another constellation above it. You know, and I'd like to also point out the very obvious fact that uh, Revelation chapter 12 is not beginning the time of Jacob's trouble. The events of Revelation chapter 12 are happening halfway through the thing. You know, I mean, how could somebody fall for this as a King James Bible believer? It's kind of an odd thing. The moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Not another constellation. You know, he sees a woman, not a constellation. And there's 12 stars, a crown of 12 stars around her head. You know, it's, it's insane, you know, that anybody would fall for this thing. But see, here's the whole thing. What this is all about. You can turn in your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 23. This false rapture date setting thing has been around now for years and years and years. I've fallen prey to it numerous times. You, you know, you, you get into this thing and it's like, September 23rd, that's going to be the day. And these false prophets, they'll come out time and time again and they will say, I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it. It could be. This could be the day of the rapture. I, I think it might be. It could be. I don't know. I can't say for sure. Well, then you're not prophesying anything. The prophecies that come from God through a somebody that prophesies the future are sure they are definite let me show you jeremiah chapter 23 verses 30 through 32 therefore behold i am against the prophets saith the lord that steal my words every one from his neighbor behold i am against the prophets saith the lord that use their tongues and say he saith behold i am against them that prophesy false dreams saith the lord and do tell them and cause my people to err by their lies i'll get back to that in a minute and by their lightness yet i sent them not nor commanded them therefore they shall not profit this people at all saith the lord you know what these fakers are doing when they come out and they give you these false prophecies they are what it would say there cause my people to err by their lies why it puts you into a state of inactivity. It puts you into this passive state where you're just like, I'm not going to bother doing things because after all, we only have three weeks or whatever else till the 23rd and things, you know, so I think Jesus might be coming back. I think that this is the time and this is it. This is it. And, and it, it causes you to err because of these people lying to you. And what happens is, after a while, you get this, oh, he's coming? Oh, he didn't come. Oh, he's coming? Oh, he didn't come. And after a while, you go through that, and you finally just say, you know what? Maybe he's not coming. It causes you to err by them lying to you and you being dumb enough to listen to them. I'm going to tell you right now, you will fall for it. I've fallen for it. 
you know, I've fallen for this thing different times. You know, the Feast of Trumpets and all this other stuff, and maybe it's May, there, you know, early May, the springtime, and the Song of Solomon thing, you know, and uh, all this stuff. And you, you get into this thing where you just kind of postpone certain things in your life. You don't live your life, you know, uh, the life that the Lord's given you. You don't, you don't want to do anything because, well, after all, the, the rapture is going to happen. It's just disgusting. If the Lord wanted the body of Christ to know the timing of the rapture, he would reveal it in Scripture. Are you a King James Bible believer? Say, well, yes, brother, but, I, but nothing. Is it in the Scriptures? No. Is it clearly spelled out in, in Scripture for the, a Christian in the Pauline epistles? Can you tell me where in the Pauline epistles it says the timing of the rapture? Show it to me. Show it to me. It's not there. I do believe that the return of Jesus Christ for the body of Christ is imminent. That's why we're supposed to look for him. I mean, if we're, if it's not imminent, why are we told to look for him? You know, I'm going to do a study on the thing of the imminency of the, the rapture, uh, as taught in the King James Bible, because that's another thing, a little post he's like to, to talk about. Because, see, for them, the return of Jesus Christ is not imminent. It's very clearly spelled out. The second coming is what they believe is the their rapture. And, of course, you know, the posties are lost. So they are actually looking for the second coming. They are correct in that, at least, you know. But uh, for the body of Christ, Jesus Christ is coming back. His return is imminent. We don't know the day. We have no idea, you know. And I know that there, no man knoweth the day or the hour. I know that uh, scripture there, Matthew 24, Mark 13, both places there talk about that. But that's talking about the second coming. Now you can know the approximate time period. You can't know the day or the hour because of those days are shortened. You know, again, I've done, I've talked about that in other studies. But for a Christian to try to come out and predict the day of the rapture and then do this flippy floppy thing of, well, I'm not saying it will be the 23rd of September. It could be, but maybe, but maybe not. And things, what's your proof? Astrological signs, a bunch of weird people putting stuff together, lying about Revelation chapter 12 coming out and saying, uh, well, it's Virgo. That's the woman that he sees. And it's not that at all. He sees a woman and stars, a crown of stars around her head. He doesn't say, I see two different you know, constellations up there and things like this. And I've seen, I watched a few of the videos and things that are out there and, things, and it's just like they're lying. They're just twisting scripture and tweaking things and moving things around and stuff to try and prove all oh, this magical thing of it's this, this year. It's going to be this year. You know, I saw a particular faker. You can figure out who I'm talking about. And he said that Israel was reborn in 1947. That's when Israel became a nation. No, that was 1948. May 14th, 1948. Look it up. But see, to make the little chart look nice and pretty, you'd say it'd be, you know, a biblical generation of 70 years. So you go from 1947 to 2017. Wow, isn't that something? And people go, oh, it's really going to happen this year. And then it doesn't happen. And then you lose faith. The false prophet comes and calls his people to err by their lies. That's what's going on here. And I'll tell you what, you can't go through much of this stuff before you start to lose faith. That he's coming, you know, because you get excited and you think, oh, we can predict it and things like this. And then he doesn't come on the day that you thought that he was going to come. And then you get frustrated and it... And it starts to wear you down. You know what you need to do as a Christian? You need to be here in as, as an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And I'll grant you, it, it gets real rough at times. It gets really disgusting to be here on this planet, especially nowadays. Um, times are getting worse uh, quickly. Uh, I'd like to go today. I'd like the rapture to happen today. But you know what? I'm here for a reason. I'm here to preach the Word of God, both online and offline, out there. I'm here as a testimony for Jesus Christ. And you are too. Don't think because I'm in full-time ministry and you're not that somehow you have less, you know, responsibilities or something on this earth. Let me tell you something. God could take any one of you out of here today that's saved and say, okay, come up. You know, it's, it's just you've got it pretty rough down there. He has you here for a reason. He has you here to talk to somebody out there. A lot of you have experienced it. And, you, and it's never planned. That's the amazing thing. True divine appointments are not planned by you. They're planned by God. 
you have something to do, you got some place to go, it's not even on your mind. I'm going to tell you that. And you go out there in public and all of a sudden you find yourself talking to somebody and you feel that door open. They say, I just wonder about, you know, the, the future or whatever. And all of a sudden it's just like the Lord's speaking through you and you're sharing the gospel with them. And you go, whoa, and you come home and you're just like pumped up and you're so excited. And you're going, that was amazing. Wow. Supernatural. You see, you had no part in it other than just being the one that was there that God used in that situation. That's why we're still here, brethren. God has work for me to do. God has work for you to do. Yeah. And when he says, okay, that time's up, his mercy there and things, when his long-suffering patience is now, that's it. <laughs> we're leaving. Don't try to figure out the date. Why? Because it's going to make you inactive. I mean, how many of you out there have fallen for this thing of September 23rd. And in the back of your mind, you're thinking, I'm just going to kind of postpone this thing I was going to do because the 23rd is going to be here real soon. And I I don't know. I, It might be the day. And it, you've been deceived. And the Lord's not going to use some, some astrological type of a deal and whatever else that supersedes Scripture. Think about that one. It's not in the Bible, but we can see it in the stars. So the stars give a greater witness than Scripture itself. I don't think so. Be very careful who you're watching and who you're listening to. If they're giving you an authority that's not clearly spelled out in Scripture, you're dealing with a false prophet every single time. 